Hello everyone, welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda and I am in a crunch to get some seeds started, y'all. It just seems like I am behind on getting some of my seeds started. I still have some peppers that I wanna get started. I was looking through my seeds today and I realized that I have not planted this Lizia pepper. It's a red Lizia pepper, I don't have a picture, but I ordered these a while back and uh, I still have not planted these. And I want to get these planted. I have some, a lot of flowers that um, I got from uh, New Swingers that I want to get those uh, planted. And these are a lot of uh, perennial seeds. Uh, some of them are annuals, but most of them are perennials. And I want to go ahead and get these planted. And um, there's just a lot of things that I want to get planted. So y'all, I have um, got my trays in. I told y'all I was waiting on some more trays to start some more seeds. I have been starting seeds in different containers, but I did want to go ahead and try to get them into these because, you know, they're roomy. Then I can get them to fit uh, good on my uh, grow shelves. So you want to try, if you possibly, if you do a grow shelf, you want to try to use your space wisely. And when you're using your lights, you need to uh, be able to fit all this stuff in. And as uh, things are coming out, like if you're, uh, like right now, my tomatoes, they're uh, growing uh, taller. So be sure to be lifting your lights and uh, lowering the lights for the new things because I noticed today I had taken the tomatoes and took them to another shelf, but I had left my light uh, up and then I put some peppers that had just germinated underneath it and that will cause your plants to stretch toward the light and they will become leggy. So I just want for you new uh, gardeners, be sure to move those uh, grow lights close to your plants so that they will, your seedlings will not, your seedlings will not get very leggy. So um, just gonna open up these um, trays and there are 10 of these trays. I got these from Amazon. This is the brand. Uh, that's the name brand that I ordered and I am trying, y'all still trying to use my, my soil blocker. I do have my soil uh, good and moist, but I just want to uh, let you all know also that one thing that I am noticing uh, about uh, using this soil blocker is that it's more convenient to use this uh, blocker outside than inside because of the fact that you have to moisten this soil so much. Uh, basically going to be working with mud. So um, I'll probably be using this outside more. I'm sure I will. So I won't uh, be making these huge mess, but I was so excited about it when I first got it that I want to go ahead and try it inside. But y'all, our temperatures have dropped back down and uh, they're expected to get in the 30s tonight so uh we're having some cold temperatures it was very very cool today today was not a good day to be outside uh trying to work in the yard especially after it had been so warm but i wasn't able to be out there anyway because i had appointments today so i have been very busy taking care of appointments getting some appointments out of the way and so i uh, got back and I did want to, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to put the rest of my, um, I'm going to do the rest in some trays. But uh, this is very moist, so we're going to see if I can get it to come out better. I think, I'm, I'm sure another thing that is going to help is when I start to sifting this soil. So far, I have not been sifting the soil, you all. So that is another variable that is playing a difference, making a big difference. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and push these out. Try to make sure that I'm gonna remove all 
of the soil. Okay, y'all, I came out with a, a more clean block than I did the last time. So that means that I'm getting better at this. And I figured that I would get better at it. Uh, you know, as time goes on, just like with anything else, you will get better. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this in here for right now since it has a lot of the soil on it. I'm going to fill up this tray also because I just want to get some stuff planted. And one thing that I want to get planted is the, the Lizia pepper. The first time that I saw the Lizia pepper was on uh, Gardening with Lisa's ch channel. She grew the uh, Lizia pepper last season. And I like the look of the pepper. It's a very beautiful pepper. I am not, um, I'm not sure how it really tastes, but I am going to go ahead and I'm going to try it. And this is not going to fit into this container. And that is another thing, y'all. Uh, I looked at the, the dome lids. I wanted to tell you all about the dome lids. Those dome lids have gotten outrageous in price on Amazon. So I did not order the dome lids. I said, no, we're not doing that. We, we're not. I'll just use the um, plastic wrap unless I find some dome lids. And I don't know what happened to mine. I had a lot of dome lids, but they have disappeared. And um, I'm not going to say disappeared. I, I've misplaced them. I'm sure they're in one of these uh, storage buildings, and I just need to go out there and get them. Go out there and, and look and find where they are. So I am going to put, a, put out a search for them, and I will find those. And this, see, this soil is very, very. This is the soil I was using in the soil block, but it is too uh, wet for these trays. But I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. I'm going to put a big seed in here. I have, I'm going to show you all the seeds that I'm going to be planting. I'm going to fill these. Let's see. I'll put two more in here and two in here, and then that'll be what I will plant today. I just really don't want my soil to be that wet. That's, the soil does not need to be that moist for your trays. You want it to be where it is moist, but you want it to be where you can, um, you don't have to, water is not going to come out of it when you squeeze it. So remember that whenever you're filling your trays, but you need it very wet for your soil block. So those are some things that you have to remember when you are starting to see different variables for different methods and techniques. And also, when you are handling your trays, if your trays have been outside, be careful with these trays because uh, spiders like to hide in these trays. So be careful with those. Don't, don't be careless and not paying attention when you are handling them because their spiders can hide between these cells. I guess y'all say I always talk about spiders, but spiders are, are something that you want to be careful about because, you know, we're gardening, but we don't want to get injured or we don't want to get uh, hurt by, you know, something if we can help it because, you know, I just want to warn people about certain things that they may not, you know, really give a second thought sometimes. Just want to, you know, keep the awareness. Okay, so that's all I'm going to be able to fit in there. For some reason, these these trays are smaller. These are not the same trays that we have been uh, dealing with. So it, things are not fitting in there right. So I guess this is why these were the least expensive of the trays that were on Amazon. And that is why I got them. But now I'm seeing... Again, that, you know, you get what you pay for because these are not the size that I really prefer. 
because I need to be able to use all my space. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. First thing, I'm going to plant these Lizia peppers, these red Lizia pepper seeds. But yeah, go and check out uh, Gardening with Lisa's channel. This, there's how many seeds are in here. And I am not going to plant a whole bunch in, in any of my... Uh, I'm going to only put one in each. I'm going to put, I'm going to plant six. I'm going to put one seed in each. I need to push this down some. And I also need to put some more soil. Okay, now we're going to put one seed. Since they didn't give us very many seeds, we're going to really be very sparing with our seeds. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little soil on top just to cover them. Add a little vermiculite, since I'm going to be keeping these inside. And my uh, peppers have been, my peppers have really been germinating really, really well. I recently put some in some of those uh, pellets, those uh, peat pellets, and they have germinated. My uh, sweet potato slips that I recently uh, cut off of the potatoes and put in jars of, in a jar of water has began to get roots. Okay, so that is my Lizia pepper. Okay, next I'm going to plant this wildflower, and it is a perennial. And these are some tiny seeds. I'm just going to sprinkle a few of these tiny seeds. Those are very, very pretty. So I'm going to have six cells of those. Put that in. It is a perennial on here, so I will know. Sometimes you need to put that on there so that you will know. And um, then when they're germinate and you get ready to put them out into your landscape you can decide where you put them you know because sometimes you might want to put a um perennial in a perennial bed opposed to just putting it somewhere else so that you you know that this is going to come back next year so if i you know i wouldn't just put it in a, a pot that i got um you know my annuals in and then I dig everything up. You want to know that this is a perennial pot or planting, and then next season, you'll be able to look for that plant to come back. So that is the wallflower. I'm going to keep the theme going with some flowers right now. This is a Gloricea daisy. It is a perennial also. And it would be good, um, but for me, I think that I would like to keep my perennials in one bed so that, you know, I would know that next season I don't have to worry about this bed. 
And y'all, that'd be a good thing to not have to worry about what you're going to plant in a in a bed that uh, because you know that all those flowers that were in there are going to come back. So if you want to, you could add something, but you don't want to, you know, overdo it and use up your space. And that'd be one less bed that you'll have to worry about planting next season. Gloricia Daisy. Very beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and get these planted and then I'll come back and I will add the Nikki light to the entire tray. I'm just going to place them down. Okay, the next one. I do not know how to pronounce this. Pyrethrium daisy. Another beautiful daisy. Also a perennial. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to plant these pumpkins. I'm just going to put them right here. And I'm just going to put one seed into each one of these containers. Okay, that was, I was trying to make sure to see how many of these containers it was so I can put that in the middle like that. Okay, so that is a, it's called a Connecticut field pumpkin. Yeah, my washer is going, so if you hear some noise, that's what it is, my washing machine. Okay, so now I can go ahead, since I've got that tray planted, I'll go ahead and add my vermiculite. Okay, we can move this tray out of the way and go ahead and start on this tray. Now, in this, um, I have got some other seeds over here that I did not plant any of. And I 
I have had these seeds, but I have not planted some of these seeds that I was supposed to get planted. So, um, okay, we, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do a um, tray of spinach. I'm going to go ahead and plant some spinach. Because sometimes the spinach don't want to germinate for me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start some in one tray. Let's start one tray of spinach. I dropped more than one seed in each one of these trays. Add some more because I didn't have enough soil in the other one, so I'm just gonna add some more to this one. Okay, so let me label that. That is those uh, Bloomingdale spinach. I love those. Bloomingdale Long Standing. I already got some of these lupins outside. Y'all, they're in my uh, winter so, and they are looking wonderful. So I am not going to start any more of these. Let's see, these are dwarf mixed colors. Takes a while for them to germinate. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do it because of the fact that it takes a long time for them to germinate. And those colors, I'm not sure which colors I have out there. So, and these are dwarf variety, a dwarf variety. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna sow some of these seeds. We're going to see if I end up with the same uh, plants, it'll be okay. But these are some beautiful plants, beautiful perennial flowers. So I dropped the seed. I heard it hit the table. I don't know where it went, so I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to cover these. And now I already know what I'm pl planting in this container right here. Okay, so the last seed that we're gonna plant today is the squash. It's a jumbo pink banana winter squash. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start the seeds on those. And since these are some huge seeds, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plant them into these blocks right here. I'm just going to plant one seed into each of these blocks. And I have a lot of squash seeds to get started. I have a mix somewhere, and I had it today. I had it in my hand, but right now I am not seeing that those seeds. But here is another squash seed that I plan to start really soon, and it is called the Sweet Dumpling. And I want to get this one started also. I think I'll go ahead and start it. Right now. If I want to get me an early start on squash this season, 
hoping that maybe I'll get to get a harvest before the squash bugs come and then I can go ahead and not have to worry about them devastating my crop because if you all have ever done, dealt with this squash bug you know it is no fun it is a battle that is hard to win because they are so aggressive when they come for your squash, they come for your squash. Okay, so I'm gonna need to close. Okay, that is another thing that I'm gonna have to get used to is, okay, I'm just gonna take some soil and put it over the seeds, instead of trying to close the uh, soil around these seeds on my soil blocks, I'm just gonna take some soil and put it on top of those soil blocks. And that is the which squash was that? That was the pink Banana squash. Let me just pat it down a little. Okay, y'all, my washer is in there going crazy, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get these uh, sweet dumpling squash planted. And I am going to put one seed in each of these cells. Right here. This was the seeds on these look like. I did not get to taste this last season, but I did grow this last season. It was in a, a mix. And so that is why I decided to go ahead and plant it again so that I can get a chance to eat it this time. But that is what it looks like. Now I'm just gonna cover those seeds up. And it is called a sweet dumpling. One thing I can say about them is they last a long time. They are a good uh, winter squash that you can uh, sit, you know, put up and you can store. It stores very well. And also another one of those uh, that stores very well. Let me show you. I want to show you all this little pumpkin from last season. How well it has stored. This has this was planted last year, and I harvested before uh, it got cold. It was I harvested probably in maybe August or September, but it is still. Uh, it still looks good, and I'm sure I could uh, cut it and, and eat it. So that is uh, one reason to plant pumpkins and things like that, is they store so well, and this is one of those types. So that is why I am planting it, so that you want to have something that you can store. Although you might not be a big fan of eating pumpkins, but if there was a, a shortage of different things that were growing, then and this is all you had, I'm sure you would love it. So... Um, I'm going to make my label for this, and that is the sweet dumpling squash. So I feel good to have those things planted. And I hope that y'all have enjoyed this video and that you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.